Today's topic is Kiki's Delivery Service, Miyazaki's animation work back in 1989. This is the title shot, 1989. So it was made more than 30 years ago, in the midst of the bubble economy. And it's always in the people's top three choice of their all-time favorite Ghibli anime. Princess Mononoke and Spirited Away, they enjoy more critical acclaims. But when it comes to people's choice, it has the simplicity back in the days, and it's about 100 minutes, maybe 103. These aspects make the film popular to many people. The film is based on a children's literature of the same, by Eiko Kadono. I brought the paperback version. Here it is, a children's literature. It was published in, well, the story was first serialized on some magazine. And the story was published as a book in 1985. So Ghibli adapted the story relatively soon after it was published. Okay, this film has so much to talk about, so I want to let you know before we begin that. It takes two lectures, today and next week. Today will be a beginner's version. So today I'll talk about things in a relatively easy form to understand. If you can, please enjoy while watching the broadcasted version that was on the air a few days ago. I know you recorded it. Okay, this is a fantasy taking place somewhere in Europe. A 13-year-old witch starting to go independent. However, it's not an ordinary fantasy. Miyazaki didn't make it like that. Thorough analysis on Kiki's delivery service, beginner's edition. So today, I want to focus on what distinguishes the film from ordinary fantasies. Three extraordinary elements of Kiki's delivery service. First of all, it's a modern story. You see many opinions on this issue in sources like Wikipedia, but it's a modern story. Second, why Gigi talks and stops talking. This also draws the line from normal fantasies. Finally, subtext depicted with images only. There is a lot of this. So we are baffled when we focus on the lines spoken by the characters. Okay, so let's start from the top. According to Hayao Miyazaki, the story takes place in Europe, which has not experienced the two great wars, a parallel universe which has seen neither the first and second world wars. That's why we see oddly balanced technical and scientific advancements. I mean, for example, in the film, you see people watching TV, black and white TV. It seems that many people own one. So some say that the story is in the 60s. However, you see cars from the 1920s on the street and 1940s aircraft in the sky. It's more like an airship. But what people are wearing on the street, it has the 80s essence. The reason for this is quite simple. Miyazaki took a trip to Europe in 1988, a year before the film was produced, and designed the costume and cultural aspect in the film based on what he saw during the trip. So, I told you that the story takes place in the modern time, that is, 1989, to be more specific, when the film was released. And I also mentioned about the absence of the two great wars. It's because the wars entailed incredible technical advancements. So, it is believed that if there was no World War I, of course, the tools used for the war would not have advanced so much, and airplanes would not have been put into practical use so much. Furthermore, it is often believed that if there was no Second World War, the development of large airplanes would have been delayed or may not have even happened. So this world has been met with slow technical advancement due to the absence of the two great wars. So the story is set in 1989, around the time when the film is released. I'll talk about this a little later, the reason why it's logical to think this way. The second one, why can Gigi the cat speak? A young witch can understand the cat, her familiar. This setting is written in the original book, and the book described their relationship as follows. A mother witch who gave birth to a girl gets a black cat born around the same time. So the black cat was born in the same year. The black cat is further described as a special one that only the girl can understand. However, when the girl falls in love, the cat leaves the girl to find a partner of its own. 
So, according to the background setting, Kiki's mom actually had a black cat of her own, which left her when she fell in love. This is quite a typical fantasy background setting, which was simply abandoned by Miyazaki. Miyazaki mentioned quite an unreasonable reason for this in the interview, saying, I don't like cats that much. I don't like their faces, like they know it all. This was how Miyazaki dissed cats in a rather honest interview with Yoichi Shibuya for Rocking On magazine. Still, he does take good care of the cat in the Ghibli studio. So, I guess the remark in the interview was a bit of a joke. The reasons why Kiki can only understand Gigi and later loses that ability are very different from the book. Miyazaki quite intricately made the change. Well, in guidebooks and analysis, some say Kiki grew up and ceased to understand Gigi. There are just so many opinions. You have to read the subtext from the images to understand this. There are some codes only Miyazaki uses. I'll cover this in the Intermediate Edition next week. The third one, this last one I'll be mainly focusing on today. Too many subtexts depicted through imagery only. There are just so many of these. I'll give you some examples. For example, the night of Kiki's departure. Under the full moon, she leaves her hometown. Kiki, flying on her broomstick, meets a witch who started training earlier. So, this is her, quite good looking. Koji Morimoto was in charge of her character design. She started the training a year earlier, so she is one year older. They're flying in tandem. This elder witch tells Kiki that she's good at fortune telling and asks Kiki, do you have any special skills? Kiki is so impressed. This witch has a much greater magic skill than Kiki. For example, Kiki specifically needs to use reaction force to fly. She finds this witch and tries to approach her. She leans left to fly toward her. She has to swivel to change directions like an airplane. As she leans, the altitude temporarily drops, and then Kiki soars to approach the witch. Thus, Kiki can only change directions through a rather exaggerated motion. This elder witch, on the other hand, when she says goodbye and flies away from Kiki, she simply points her feet to the ground. She's sitting on her broomstick and simply points her feet to the ground. Like this, she needs no preliminary motion or a big movement like Kiki. Her broomstick soars naturally, then comes down to the other side of Kiki as she says, good luck to you, and then flies down to her town. So she can fly really well. So this elder witch is a nice person, telling Kiki good luck to you, and then flying down to her town. Kiki looks up to this good-looking witch, and she says, I have to have a special skill. This is what you can understand from the character's line, but the town where this senior witch is working, you see the image of it, and this is the subtext depicted by the image only. The senior witch gradually descends to this place, this town. This is a quite obvious hint from Miyazaki, a small town with an oddly large amount of neon lights. And this center part, you see this? Just beneath the broom part, this windmill has red neon lights. This color is not randomly designated. The windmill is clearly designated to have red neon lights in the storyboard. There is only one place in this whole wide world with a windmill glittering in red neon lights. The windmill decorated with red neon lights exists in only one place. It's Moulin Rouge in Paris. Moulin Rouge, a cabaret in Paris, it has become quite a classy location nowadays. But in the 50s and 60s, when Miyazaki was in his youth, the place was just like Kabukicho. It was like Kabukicho for the world. So the town is a red light district like Kabukicho. Well, Miyazaki made the film for kids to enjoy it as a fantasy. But to we adults who took the kids to the theater, the mill with red neon lights sends quite an obvious message. Life is not that easy. That's the message from Miyazaki. It's also written in the storyboard. For this scene with the conversation with the senior witch, he wrote, So easy to fool a country girl like Kiki. This note on the senior witch, so easy to fool a country girl like Kiki, 
It's like an instruction to the animators. This detail impacts the nuance of the lines that the Elder Witch speaks. So we gradually understand why she's wearing piercings and other accessories. She says, I started telling fortunes about love lately. It means her clients are prostitutes, and the prostitutes' clients in the red light district like Kabukicho. So, in this modern time, in 1989, a naive 13-year-old girl trying to make a living in the city alone faces such temptations and risk. That's what Miyazaki expressed in this scene. From the kid's point of view, they can relate to Kiki meeting this pretty senior witch who's doing okay and get a little anxious thinking if she will be okay. But the adults are surprised to see where she's landing. We see what it takes for a girl to live in the city, so the scene is made to be interpretable both ways. Miyazaki really takes seriously the meaning of this naive 13-year-old girl leaving the countryside to live in the city and what kind of risk she might face. Now, this is Ghibli's textbook, which I refer to a lot. The most basic cited document for discussions regarding Miyazaki's works, this is something of an official document published from Ghibli itself. In page 74 of the book, quote, This is not a fantasy about a witch from a made-up world. I'm depicting what women face in this modern society. This was Miyazaki's clearly stated resolution. Modern society, so it's not a story in Europe back in the 60s, it's now. This is what I have been talking about. The story Miyazaki was trying to tell was about a young girl coming to a big city from the countryside in Japan in 1989 during the bubble economy. She can use spells, so she can make it on her own. It's not this kind of happy story. I mean, we know that the movie has a happy ending, but there is a risk in what she's trying to do. For kids who want to see the happy fantasy stuff, such realistic details are only depicted in the image. Like this, the subtext is only explained by this image. This is what I meant by subtext only is depicted by the image. So it's made to appropriately take the kids to the fantasy world. The audience is here good at fortune telling and telling fortune about love lately, but the image imparts a message less noticeable to kids. This pretty good looking senior witch. She just flies down to a nightlife spot, a red light district. She is shown descending there. I mean, it's like this senior witch is depicted to be falling very slowly. But Kiki can't see that and just looks up to her. That's what we see. And this senior witch tells Kiki, good luck to you. And Kiki cannot see what's behind the cheering words. Good luck to you. There is a meaning behind this casual word. It was her proud gesture, her word, good luck to you. Her tone is excited when she says she made it through a year, and she can almost go home. Well, life in this town was actually quite hard, and as a girl, she had to go through a lot. She won't show that. So in this scene, Kiki is like a schoolgirl meeting some lady who works in a hostess bar in Tokyo. Kiki is getting high on her Instagram photos, wanting to live like a celebrity without seeing the tough side of it. And just thinking it would be kind of cool to work in hostess bars, just fantasizing it. In Miyazaki's animated films, you see so many details and subtext explained through images and not with the character's lines. Like the image of the Moulin Rouge I mentioned. So if you see something odd in a scene, I recommend you to always try to look into it. It's really fun to find out that the subtexts are quite meticulously made. Okay, Kiki's delivery service. I'm first telling you about three aspects that distinguish this from ordinary fantasies. And this was the first example of the subtext only depicted by image. So let's move on to the second example. Okay, the second example. Here you go. I guess these should do. 
Kiki's delivery service is get your thoughts in order. <laughs> Three elements distinguishing Kiki's delivery service from normal fantasies. The subtext only depicted by image. There is another scene with such a subtext. This is the scene. This is Kiki's mom. Her name is Kokiri, and she is a witch. And this Kokiri, she has these flasks and graduated cylinders and droppers. She's making magic medicines with a procedure that looks like a science experiment. What I want you to see, realize, is this. In this scene with Kokiri, here at the left end, there is this huge pot. It holds flowers, so it seems like a vase, but it's not. This also appears in other scenes with Kokiri. This huge pot is in every scene with Kokiri. It's positioned so that it's noticeable to the audience. When Kokiri is in the scene, there is the pot, like behind her, or just somewhere else. Wherever it is, the pot is shown somewhere relatively noticeable. This big pot, there is a specific word for describing this. It's not mentioned in the film, but it's called cauldron. The name of the pot derives from an epic scene in uh, Shakespeare's work. This film, I bet only a few people saw this. The title is Black Cauldron, about 30 years ago. Tokyo Disneyland had an act called Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour. I joined the tour so I remember it. I think the event was based on this Disney animation film Black Cauldron, released in 1985. A witch in the film uses a cauldron, the big pot, for preparing an evil potion. We know this typical image of witches, boiling a potion in a pot. We see it in a lot of movies and manga. These images all originated from Act 4 in Macbeth by Shakespeare. In Act 4 of Macbeth, three witches boil potions in the cauldron in a cave. It contains rotten intestines, a poisonous frog, eye of a newt, and the liver of a Jewish person. All those weird things are boiled. There is a line that says, double, double, toil and trouble. And another line says, fire burn and cauldron bubble. This is the opening scene of Act 4. So, if a witch has a pot, people should immediately relate that with the cauldron in Shakespeare's Macbeth. This is what Hayao Miyazaki expects people to think. It's Shakespeare's Macbeth. It's not The Tempest or other rather minor works. It's Shakespeare's Macbeth. Everyone should have seen it. Miyazaki graduated from Gakshuin University and requires this level of knowledge from adult audiences. That's unreasonable. Even I've never seen Macbeth. I happened to join the Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour about 20 years ago. So I know what it is. Normal people won't realize this. But Miyazaki wants people to realize it. So that's why the pot repeatedly appears in the scenes with Kokiri. So this big pot is a cauldron for making witches' potions. Let's go back to this image. So the big pot is a cauldron for making witches' potions. And Kokiri... Kiki's mom is a successor of a classic witch, but Kokiri decided to take the easy route. So for her now, the cauldron means nothing more than a dry flower container. She put in dry flowers. Like here you see, it has dry flowers in it. What happened is that Kokiri, she inherited the cauldron from her parents, but ended up using it as a container for her dry flowers. And Kokiri uses the science equipment, like the flask, graduated cylinder, and dropper I mentioned, to make witch potions. So she is some slacker. Many analysis blogs and reviews on Kiki's delivery service state that Kokiri, Kiki's mom, has a peaceful life in the countryside, married a human male, and has a child. So she can be seen as a rollout model of witches, a happy upstart version.
And Kiki would someday be a sweet mom like Kokiri. That's what they said. However, that's what normal people think and not how Miyazaki sees her. Miyazaki is. He is more on the witch's side. I mean, he uses the magic of his anime and drawings. So, he is from a lineage of artisans. So, this Kokiri is a kind of person who failed to properly handle the cauldron. She inherited the magic pot from her witch's family and turned it into a vase for dry flowers. And she also forgot the spells she inherited. She mentions about a decrease in population and magic power of witches. Like she says it's a sign of the times. But she's wrong. She's supposed to boil herbs with the cauldron. But instead, she simply uses chemicals. <laughs> she takes the easy way using a spirit flame. So she can only make rheumatism medicine, which might not even work. Only the old lady tells her that nothing works as well as her rheumatism. So Kokiri's thing is appreciated only by this old lady in the neighborhood. If you observe carefully as a witch, she's a dropout. And she blames it on the era. We listen to the character's line, and we simply accept that. But actually, Kokiri is an incompetent witch who makes mistakes quite often. Such a scene is not in the original book. Miyazaki decided to add scenes where Kokiri's spells fail, which is not in the original book. The scene where Kiki tells her she's leaving tonight and Kokiri says, wait, and a thing in her hand pops up. It's depicted like a rather humorous scene where you can see the power of the spell rises along with her temper. But this just actually demonstrates her poor skills as a witch. So she restarts the procedure to make the medicine, but it's just something that the old lady would appreciate. It means her medicine is only effective to those who believe. So she can only make something effective on a placebo level. Is Kokiri ashamed of herself? Does she actually take magic seriously? The answer is no. You see in this image, like this, she extracts an herbal ingredient. Actually, she is supposed to use witch's intuition and instinct to determine the quantity. But instead, she uses this precise balance to measure the quantity in grams. That's how she makes her medicine. And behind that, this stove hasn't been used for years. This big stove in the background has not been used in quite a while. The cauldron is supposed to be hanging from there, so she did try to use it in the past, but left it unused for decades. Kokiri says that magic power is getting weaker, like it's a sign of the times. However, the actual procedure required lizards' eyes and other stuff to be boiled three days straight. That was so cumbersome, so she resorted to science, the easy way, and so she is forgetting the proper way of making herbs. Why did Miyazaki have to depict her like this? This episode is not in the original book. He did not have to draw in the cauldron. It's not in the book, but he just had to because it represents what Miyazaki felt as a very serious problem. Many animators are getting good at computers for convenience sake. They simply sample live actions, like they sample the movement from a movie of an actual animal to make realistic animated movements of the animal. They didn't spend enough time on sketch practice since they were kids, so they can't draw a four-legged animal with proper perspective. So, they can't even draw simple actions properly. This situation of new animators, Miyazaki had seen it through interactions with these young animators. They're what Kiki's mom, Kokiri, represents. That's who she is. People say that it's a sign of the times. Some say it's just natural because they grew up with videos and because CGI is growing so much. Miyazaki saw a rapid loss of the animation techniques passed on from the time when he was working in toy animation, the time of Natsuzora, like it was a tradition only passed down to their heirs. And 1989 is marked as a huge transitional period. So this Kokiri, the mother, is depicted to be accepted as 
how should I put it, an ideal mom to those nice Ghibli fans. She's depicted as a kind and wonderful mother figure. But Miyazaki, an artisan in the lineage of witches or wizards, can clearly see the flaws of Mother Kokiri. As an artisan, she is extremely incompetent. Miyazaki sees her that way. Kiki's dad, Okino, tells his daughter when she is leaving. You can always come home if things don't work out. He hugs Kiki while he says it. There is a book called Roman Album for Kiki's Delivery Service. In this book, Miyazaki mentions this line, saying, What kind of father is he? He just denounces this father like that. I mean, we see this father saying kindly, you can always come home if things don't work out. And there is this mother who doesn't go tough on her. And she says something like, I can only make medicine and fly. And my daughter Kiki ended up being only capable of flying. This easygoing attitude does show her as a kind mother figure. However, Miyazaki denounces them for saying things like, you can always come home if things don't work out, to their child, to deprive the daughter of a chance to grow up and stand on her own feet. So, as an artist, the animator Hayao Miyazaki sees Kiki's parents as modern parents who spoil their children. So, the world of Kiki's delivery service, according to Miyazaki, can be automatically translated as follows. A girl raised by no good parents who cannot properly raise their children. Now, she can only think about herself, always thinking of what people can do for her instead of what she can do for other people. The only way for such a spoiled brat to be independent is to be stronger than her parents. She faces so many challenges to be stronger than her parents, to stand up. It's not about a girl becoming a decent witch. It's about becoming a decent person and not a decent witch. Miyazaki was trying to make a film about a woman training herself to be a decent person. So we can see that Miyazaki was trying to make a rather over-the-top anti-fantasy. I mean, it's just... The concept is just completely opposite of Harry Potter. It's not about becoming a better wizard, but a better person. That explains why Gigi ceases to speak to Kiki around the ending. I'll get to that next week. And the parents I just mentioned, are they bad and harmful to their child? Miyazaki thinks that they are no good. But the way he depicted these parents, I mean... A girl is spoiled by no good parents who cannot properly raise their children. So she can only think about herself. She struggles to become independent. This plot is actually exactly the same as that in Spirited Away. Miyazaki actually thought Kiki's delivery service properly imparted his message. This is the theme of the movie. And it's basically the same as what he did in Spirited Away. So this plot, a spoiled girl raised by no good parents, has put herself under harsh conditions to train herself to grow and solve her problems by herself. It's exactly the same. People actually get this from Spirited Away. And Miyazaki had to spoon feed the audience. He thought Kiki's delivery service would do the job. He thought adult audiences were mature enough to see how bad parents they are. But he was completely wrong, so he depicted the parents to be assholes, extremely obviously. But before they act like one, Kiki, no, I mean Chihiro, appears as a girl who cannot behave in the backseat of the car, just says no no to everything. Miyazaki thought that would do the job. So Spirited Away is a recreation of this concept. They are made to impart the same message in different ways. However, interestingly, Miyazaki depicts the parents in Kiki's delivery service with much greater affection or love than for the parents in Spirited Away. I mean, he depicts them with so much love. He thinks they are bad parents, yet depicts them with so much love, like he's saying he can relate to them. Okay, I'll show Spirited Away's, no, I mean, the storyboard of Kiki's delivery service. I'm sorry it's a little difficult to see. It's written, Kiki, with her open arm, says, Dad. And she says, would you pick me up like you used to? And then the father immediately understands his daughter's feeling and cheerfully opens his arms. You see, it's written that he immediately understood Kiki's feelings. And 
This scene where he picks her up and turns her around, it's quite long. Why did Miyazaki draw this scene? Why did he have to make this scene? This is another subtext only explained with the image. The scene includes both Miyazaki's love for the characters and his opinion of the modern family. I mean, why did he pick her up instead of just cuddling her? It's because Kiki will be flying in the sky with her magical power, that is, with her own power. But what she actually wants is her daddy to pick her up. So he sees that she's worried about flying to a town she doesn't know. He sees that this is an act of regression, saying that she wants to fly, picked up by her daddy's power. He understood that and so gave her what she wanted. Kiki's affectionate gesture, it seems so cute to Miyazaki, so he draws this scene from the line, Dad, so adorably. And Miyazaki also likes Kiki's father, who can't help but to spoil his daughter. This is called Enveloped in Tenderness. The singer sings when enveloped in tenderness in the closing tune. This love spoils Kiki and deprives her of a chance to grow up. What I have been talking about, it may sound like my fantasy, but actually this scene is linked to another scene. This scene is linked to a scene where Kiki is depressed in the later half. I'll tell you how it's linked. So, Kiki made up her mind to settle in a town called Koriko. She forced herself to make a delivery on a rainy day and ends up catching a cold. Osono, a lady who works as a baker and takes care of Kiki, she visits Kiki to make sure she's okay. While visiting Kiki, Osono tells her she'll fix her some hot oatmeal with raisins. She makes the oatmeal, puts it in a bowl, and leaves it on a table, not blowing on a spoon and bringing it to her mouth. Not like an indulgent parent who does that and says, here you go. She says, you have to eat if you want to get well, and just simply leaves the room. And Kiki just calls her as she is leaving the room. She says, Osono, with the tone exactly the same as when she said, Dad. She just simply calls her name Osono. In response, Osono stops, looks back, and replies, Hmm? She keeps going, hmm? At this point, Kiki has matured enough to say, um, never mind. This, her line, um, never mind, represents a huge step toward growing up. Here, what she really wanted to say was something like, can you stay for a little while? Like when she was worried and asked her dad to pick her up and cuddle her. She was in the most desperate time and wanted to ask Osono to stay with her, but she managed to hold that desire back. This marks a huge step in Kiki growing up. She accepted and thanked the person other than her parents for doing her a favor and managed to refrain from asking the person to stay with her and spoil her. In this scene, Osono carefully keeps her distance from Kiki. I mean, when Kiki says Osono, she takes one step back. She takes a step back from the door as a gesture indicating she can stay. But Osono stops at that position. And she replies, hmm? What she is doing is pretending to be unaware of Kiki's feelings. Kiki is trying to hold back in asking Osono to stay for a little while. This acting features an amazing sense of timing. So the father understood the feeling of Kiki when she said, Dad, and gave her what she wanted. Osono also understood the feelings of Kiki when she said Osono, but decided to pretend that she didn't, just to let her be. These two scenes, these scenes with the father and Osono, they are created to be complementary to each other. In an anime these days, Osono would say, I know you want me to spoil you and it's okay. She would say this kind of thing. After hearing that, Kiki will dive into Osono's arms crying. And Osono will go, you don't have to try to be so tough, silly girl. So it would be a tearjerker for the audiences. But crying will be an emotional catharsis and nothing more. You cry and that's it. You only remember that Kiki was lonely and desperate. But she says, Osono. And then she says, never mind. This conversation keeps audiences from crying for emotional catharsis. I mean, Miyazaki wanted to depict her growing up and was not interested in tear jerking. He did not want Kiki to make audiences cry. 
He wanted her to grow up. So why did she have to leave her parents and live by herself? The way Miyazaki saw it, Kiki's dad should have refused Kiki asking him to spoil her for one last time, saying, You're living by yourself. You're not a kid anymore. He should have laughed away her request, Dad, would you pick me up? By saying, Come on, you're not a kid anymore. And acting thick-skinned. But he can't. It's his daughter. He loves his daughter too much. Actually, Miyazaki does want to depict such a daddy who is crazy about his daughter. But Osono understands the feelings of Kiki, who is at the verge of giving in. But she pretends she doesn't, just to let Kiki be. It's because they are not related. She can be more objective. Kiki is not her child, so she doesn't go so far as to spoil her. Her emotional break is fully working to take appropriate distance. This is why... I mean, this is the reason why people should live independently from their parents. It's the only way people can grow up to be adults. The fundamental theme of this Kiki's delivery service is about becoming independent from parents. There is nothing fantasy about it at all. This theme for us living in 2020, Miyazaki's opinion is a little hard on our ears and hearts. This old man born before the war, his opinion sure is hard for us to accept. Yeah, I get that. But sorry, I'm still living with my parents. I bet a lot of you feel this way. I know it really pulls at your heartstrings. But as soon as you ignore or pretend you don't see this, Miyazaki's opinion, Kiki's delivery service, will be enveloped in tenderness to be nothing more than a sweet animation film. I know it's important for kids to enjoy this stuff while they are kids. But when you grow up and see it, you might want to put in a grown-up's perspective. Then, instead of simply relating to the characters, you'll enjoy the fact that the anime is a fine work with many film techniques for the viewers to think about. You'll enjoy finding them everywhere in the film. If you do that, for example, like when Kiki catches a cold and when she is at the hilltop feeling desperate after arriving at Koriko and before she starts living in the bakery, Kiki sees the town as a place where she can only feel unfriendliness, hatred, and rejection from the people. This refusal she feels is not resolved because she meets some nice people. She overcomes the struggle to live by herself, to be mature and strong. That's when she realizes that people in the town had this small feeling of tenderness from the start. So in the end, she can write to her parents, telling them that she loves this town. I mean, lonely and desperate people should not wait until they are enveloped in tenderness. They should hold on until they get used to it. Then, the person will realize slight kindness and tenderness are actually everywhere, to finally be comfortable where he or she is. Well, the opinion is a little hard on my ears and my heart. I get his opinion, but I always wish to live my life easier. So I lock myself in making this content for YouTube and Nikonama videos. What's amazing about Kiki's delivery service is, like I said, development as a person is depicted instead of development as a witch. And when she becomes a better person, her great magic power is unleashed. So the idea is that personal development enables Kiki to use this great magic power that surpasses her mother's. I'll talk about this in the paid part. Okay, so that was it for the thorough analysis on the film Beginner's Version. The first topic was that the film is not an ordinary fantasy, and I explained that there are so many subtexts only depicted through imagery. So this is it for the free part. I have so much more to talk about. I'll talk about the rest of this topic in the limited broadcast. If you have any questions, please give me a comment. Okay. Oh, yes. The liver of a Jewish person. Yes, I knew the word would interest you. The liver of a Jewish person. And they also put in Tartar's lips. Macbeth's, uh, the copyright for Shakespeare's Macbeth has already expired. So you have many chances to read it. Act 4. You can just read Act 4. There will be the witches and it's kind of cool. And you learn a lot. Okay, please fill in the questionnaire. So that was one quick 40 minutes. 
I mean, it's almost 45 minutes. In the limited part, I will talk about what's great aspects of this film, as I just mentioned. The scene where great magical power is unleashed following her development as a person. I want to talk about its structure and how Kiki's power is depicted. Okay, please show me the result. Thank you very much. Oh, premium members, impressive. This Kiki's delivery service, so many people see this as just a sweet anime story. I blame Yumi Matsutoya's song. It's too powerful. She sings when enveloped in tenderness, and we can't help but see it that way. The film is so great that it's still worth watching, even if you see it that way. Miyazaki actually worked hard to depict the theme on a much deeper level, but the people didn't get it. So he had to make Spirited Away. That's what happened. In the limited part, I'll talk about why Mamoru Oshii, who directed The Ghost in the Shell, praised the animation of this film to be one of the best in the history of Ghibli. He claims that compared with Ghibli's later works, the quality of the animation, including the background, it's almost second to none. That's what Oshi said. What made him think that way? I'll thoroughly analyze about a minute from the start. Only one minute due to time limitation. Each cut is amazing, so I'll analyze one cut at a time, in the limited part. And I'll explain the magic of it, what Oshi praised so much. And another topic is a hidden theme of Kiki's delivery service. The theme I mentioned was meant to be obvious. When geniuses change the world with their gift. The time when art was art, and that time is gone. This is the hidden theme. This is somewhere between beginner and intermediate. So I'll talk about this in the limited part. Okay, so the paid part starts. If you want to see this live, please subscribe to my Nikonama channel or join the YouTube membership. Then you can watch the last 10 broadcasted episodes in the archive. A premium member of each service can access all the episodes in the last three years and more. In today's premium part, I'm planning to talk a little about the topic of war and wartime. For those who want to see the past episodes rather than the live show, I recommend Toshi Okada Archives. All the episodes and keyword searches are available. You can also read all the books I publish. There is so much you can enjoy. Next week, we'll continue Kiki's delivery service. The lecture will enter the intermediate version. The issue with Kiki's ribbon might be invisible to other people. Miyazaki refrained from showing this main character's underwear as much as possible. But why is Kiki's delivery service an exception? He shows it so much in this film. And the biggest mystery in the film, why did Kiki suddenly become unable to understand Gigi? Why did Kiki, who no longer understands Gigi, smile at Gigi at the end of the film? Next week, I'll be revealing this mystery. Okay, we'll switch to the paid part. Now, please switch.